Welcome! <laughs> this is my end of year video. Um, I know I haven't really talked about TV shows much on my channel before, maybe not at all, but I watch my fair share of TV so I've decided that my end of year best and worst list will include TV as well as uh, books. Um, I think I'll start with the worst because it's kind of more fun to talk about and we can also end on a high note, you know? How's my hair shaping up? Just gonna take that out. Oh, and we're just gonna ignore this whole situation here. Not, not the lamp, I got a new lamp, I like it, I hope you like it too. <laughs> I mean this whole situation. Um, these are all library books. We're just, we're not gonna talk about it right now. Things, things just happened. I can't explain it. I don't know. <laughs> okay? <laughs> don't, don't grill me on this. So I think I'll start with my worst books of 2021. Um, this is kind of going off of my Goodreads ratings. I'm not going to include any of the books that I DNF'd this year. I just don't think that's very fair since I didn't read the whole thing. Um, so these are just 
Wow, my hair is really doing a thing. Let's just take it out. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not going to include uh, any of the books that I DNF'd because I just, I don't think that's quite fair. I think I, I should only include books that I actually finished but didn't enjoy. And as always, this is just my opinion. These are my worst books of 2021. Um, and also, these aren't all books that were necessarily published in 2021. It's just that I read them this year. And um, yeah. So the first book I'll talk about is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. Um, this is a thriller. Uh, it was one of the first thrillers I had ever read. I actually listened to it on audiobook and toward the end I think I had it at double speed just to get through the book. Um, I don't know how this rates in terms of thrillers or in terms of Lisa Jewell books. I Afterwards I, I was looking on Goodreads and realized that this isn't necessarily one of her most liked books. Um, Either way, yeah, it, it just, there were just so many bad people, like gross, like immoral, really bad, like unpleasant people. And we got uh, things from different people's perspectives and some of them were from the perspectives of these like just really immoral people. And it just made me feel kind of gross reading from their perspective. And also I just, I didn't feel like the plot was interesting enough to justify such horrible characters. Um, it was very predictable to me. Um, there, there's a character in it that just from the get-go she seems like a horrible person and then it turns out she really is just as bad as you thought she was. So I don't know, it just didn't sit well with me and I, I really didn't enjoy it. Oh, by the way, I've only got five. Five worst books. <laughs> Keeping things organized, Danielle. So the next one is Verity by Colleen Hoover. Another thriller, another very predictable thriller with a lot of immoral, bad characters that, again, I found it kind of unpleasant getting things from their perspective. And there's this whole, like, story within a story kind of aspect of it that I just wasn't buying the whole time. <laughs> um, I was kind of tired of it and um, there's also some like really erotic stuff in there that I'm totally fine with but it was just, I don't know, it just didn't really sit well with me. And there's also this one image, um, one scene in the book, that there's something that's described that it's still stuck in my head. It was just so disturbing and off-putting. Um, actually, same thing with Then She Was Gone. It, not so much a certain image, but like a certain scene, I guess, that was described. It's, it's still stuck in my head in a really unpleasant way. It's like, I, I don't think either of those really needed to be in there, but it is what it is. Gotta sneeze. I've never had girly sneezes. The third book is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This one, I don't think it's a bad book necessarily. Um, I think that Crouch did what he wanted to do pretty well. It's just that going in, I had some pretty high expectations, pretty, I guess, specific expectations that were not met. Um, this is a sci-fi uh, adventure through parallel universes. And the main character is this, oh gosh, what kind of scientist is he? He's a very high level scientist guy who decided to settle down and become a college professor instead and raise a family instead of becoming like a research scientist. But he's still super smart, or he's supposed to be. Uh, so it kind of bothered me um, all throughout the book when the way that our main, main character behaved was not in such a way that I believed a scientist of his caliber would react in that situation. Um, just the book ended up being more of like a fun, like if this book was made into a movie, it would be a big blockbuster action film starring <laughs> Matt Damon or someone like that. The next book is Semiosis by Sue Burke. and. Very similar to Dark Matter. Going in, I had pretty high expectations of it. It's another sci-fi um, with a group of settlers showing up on a foreign planet and they're trying to colonize and it kind of follows this, this particular group through multiple generations and we see how things are going. 
and they encounter these sentient plants while they're on this planet. And that is set up in the premise of the book, uh, just on the, the inside jacket or wherever they put those these days. And again, yeah, my, my expectations were just pretty high. Um, I was expecting more kind of in the horror realm. Um, yeah, it was a really good idea. It was a good thought experiment, but it just fell way short for me. There were some kind of tangents that felt disconnected from the main story, and I just couldn't really... It didn't feel like there was quite enough to hold on to, you know? The last book that I'm going to talk about is The Push by Ashley Audrain. Audrain? Audrain? <laughs> just say it as Canadian as possible. Ashley Audrain. Audrain? Audrain. Maybe it's Audrain. I don't know. Anyway, The Push. <sighs> I'm sorry, I couldn't enjoy this book just because of how much it reminded me of We Need to Talk About Kevin. I read the premise, I read the, the blurb on the book uh, about it, and my immediately I thought, wow, that sounds almost exactly like we need to talk about Kevin. I wonder what this author did differently with the story. And she did do things differently, of course. So, uh, so the story is from the perspective of a mother who has a young child. In this one, it's a young girl. And as the girl grows up, the mother becomes um, kind of suspicious of her child and deals with a lot of feelings of guilt that she would believe that her child would not be a good person at like such a young age, like age five, six, something happens, um, the push. <laughs> and the mother is kind of thinking bad things about her own child and she feels a lot of guilt about that and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so yeah, if you've read We Need to Talk About Kevin, you'll know exactly what I mean, that this book sounds super similar to We Need to Talk About Kevin. Um, unfortunately, the author, it, it was a tighter focus, it was a shorter book, it had a tighter focus, so obviously this author wasn't able to do as much with the story as Lionel Shriver did with We Need to Talk About Kevin. How many times am I gonna, am I gonna say that title in this video? Um, but yeah, overall, like I, I kind of felt um, irritated, to be honest, that the author would take such a good idea from another author that had already done it in such a good way. Um, and that book was also also really popular and that she would just basically do the exact same thing I thought was sort of weird. She went in a slightly different direction with it, but I didn't feel it was different enough to, I don't know, pass through the filter. <laughs> and I think the author works in publishing or has or had. So I thought that was a little bit strange um, that that even was able to get through. So anyway, yeah, it was a more, like a more simplistic version of Lionel Shriver's book. My feet are getting too warm now. Too many socks. Going down to one pair. Better drink my coffee too before it gets cold. Okay, I was gonna go straight into worst TV of 2021, but um, I'm feeling kind of negative, so I think I think I'll do the best books. Uh, so I'll do all worst books, best books, and then I'll do all of my TV stuff. All right, best books of 2021 for me. I'm kind of gonna just let myself get away with my first book actually being a whole series of books. <laughs> so first on my best books list is The Witcher books. Uh, now I haven't finished the series yet. I've only read uh, the first two books of short stories and then the first three novels I just finished. Um, and they're so good so far. They're just a lot of fun, you know? Uh, I love all the... There's a lot of little tangents, and I, I think that would bother a lot of people, but I really enjoy them. A lot of them are funny, or we get to know a certain character really well, and I just have been really, really enjoying them. And and there's some pretty serious like social commentary in there too, on like race relations and war, and what how war affects different people, and how difficult it can be to try to remain neutral. <laughs> yeah, just like a whole bunch of 
uh, interesting stuff. Like what what makes a monster a monster? Um, yeah, very 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 good. I've been enjoying them a lot. I've got two more novels in the like main series to go, and then I think there's a uh, like a prequel novel that I'll read at the end, Season of Storms. So that's going really really well. The first actual single book <laughs> that's on my best of list is The Left Hand of Darkness by Ursula K. Le Guin. And I made a whole review video about this. Uh, I really genuinely enjoyed reading this. It, it wasn't like a fun book, I wouldn't say, but it was really thought-provoking. It's, it, um, it's a sci-fi. Uh, it was written in like the 1960s and very, very progressive views from Ursula Le Guin. I was very impressed. It's set on a planet called Winter, also known as Gethin. Uh, Winter is like its um, nickname or whatever. As you can imagine, I'm intrigued by the idea of a, a planet that's very uh, wintry. And I thought she portrayed winter itself very well. <laughs> she seemed to understand uh, snow and ice and uh, being exposed to the elements and what that can be like. Um, but the, the book is mainly about gender and human connection and what that can mean. And she really pulls apart a lot of our social norms and asks what's really necessary and what can we stand to get rid of and um, really challenges her main character to develop empathy over the course of the book. And anyway, I just... It, it took me quite a while to, to get through. I took my time with it, and, but it was just top tier, so good, excellent sci-fi. Speaking of sci-fi, my next book is Leviathan Wakes by James S.A. Corey. I know this book has been out for years and years at this point. There's like many books in this series. There's a TV show, etc. More on the TV show later. Um, but this was the first that I had really, I'd only heard of it like maybe, like when the TV show came out, this is when I heard about the books, but I had never picked one up before. And I listened to the audiobook, and it was very long, but it was really good. The, the narrators uh, did a great job. There were a couple different narrators. And um, yeah, like excellent detective story. I love sci-fi that um, involves like a few different people or groups of people slowly, um, accidentally, you know, by by circumstances, slowly um, get it coming closer together and ending up meeting and come across each other. And there's just such a good cast of characters. I just really want to see individual characters interact with other characters that are like across the universe, far, far away. So I'm I'm hoping to continue that the Expanse series in 2022. The next book I'm going to mention is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. Everyone's talked about this book. Everybody loves this book. <laughs> I finally got around to reading it. It was published in like 2012, uh, but had a, a renaissance over the last couple of years. So yeah, I finally got around to reading it um, this year and very, very good, very well done. Um, the Greek myth aspect of it is quite accurate. I think the author herself is a um, classics professor, so I, could, I didn't expect anything less. But she also brings such a real, like, hard-hitting, <laughs> emotional um, aspect to the, the story of Achilles and his close companion, Patroclus, or Patroclus, however you want to pronounce it. Um, this book made me tear up, and it's pretty hard these days. Like, I'm, I, I am an emotional person, but it's, as I get older, it's harder and harder for me to read a book and actually get really emotional while reading it. I'm just a lot more analytical about what I'm reading now, but this book definitely made me tear up a couple times, just the, the welling up of emotions. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it tore out my heart. I, I made a review video on it. Uh, yeah, first book in a long while to make me that emotional. The last book of my best books of 2021 is People We Meet on Vacation by, I didn't write it down, Emily Henry, I think. 
So good. I Before this year, I had maybe read like three or four romance novels. Um, and this year, I, I've kind of made a concerted effort to branch out into a few different genres. And one of them was romance. And I read like four or five romances this year. And this one was definitely the best for me, at least. Henry, she did such a good job of creating two very realistic characters and then explaining how and why they loved each other. <laughs> and I think a lot of romance novels that I've, <laughs> of my vast experience of like seven ever, <laughs> a lot of them <laughs> that I've read, um, it seems like a lot of people writing romance novels, they, they don't put a whole lot of focus on the falling in love and like explaining to us why it happens. There's a lot of just like insta love or people um, who seem to fall for each other just because they're nearby or whatever. But this one, yeah, like she did a great job of explaining their relationship. Um, and demonstrating to us that they care for each other and why they care for each other, even though they're two very different people and they felt like so realistic and their relationship felt really organic to me, which is something not a lot of authors can do. And I am definitely going to read more by this author. I think I already have one on hold at the library and that's on order for 2022. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. I decided to split this video in half because I've been filming for a long time and I think that this will be um, better presented as two separate videos rather than one big long video. And while editing this video, I realized that I forgot to film an outro for part one. So here's me now saying that's it for my 2021 best and worst books. And I will see you very soon in part two where I talk about best and worst TV of 2021. Bye. <laughs>